Hi, my name is Abdullah Omer, and I'm the product manager at Axis Automation Group, where we are committed to innovate and redefine manufacturing. When shopping for machines, it's important to investigate the HMI, as I'll define how successful the operator is in their day-to-day -day tasks. For years, our customers have enjoyed small console and its ease of use. With their new HMI, it makes it even more intuitive to learn, teach other operators, or to alter jobs on the go. In this webinar, we'll focus on our new machine interface, highlight its features, and how it can benefit new and existing customers, thanks to its modular hardware design. Before we dive further into it, a quick note to our existing customers here. This will completely replace your operator's daily usage of the smart console. However, all the setup functions like setting up your ATC, knife tool changers, and other alignments including offsets are still to be done using the console. The retrofit comes with a key switch that enables or disables the usage of the smart console. For safety reasons, the pause key and the e-stop will still be functional even though the console is set to a disabled state. For the new customers, you will entirely be trained on both interfaces during the installation of your machines. So, now that we have addressed that, let's dive into Move demonstration. When you open Move, you're greeted with this beautiful home screen right here, which can be divided in sections. In the top left corner, you have your outputs and general setup. Under outputs, you can manually turn on your dust collection system, vacuum pump, and manually raise your pop-up pins up. You can set all of these to either an auto or manual state. Orange pertains to manual, whereas blue signifies automatic. This machine right here is a Trident and is equipped with three cutting heads as can be seen here. Your first head is a tangential knife. There's not much that to be changed on a simple drag knife so we'll move on to position two, which is equipped with an oscillating knife. The knife can be turned manually on. Of course, you'll need an active tool for that to work. So for that, we'll go into tools, look for an oscillating knife tool, which is tool number two. Say yes to that. Once active, you can manually turn it on. This can be used without programming a job in CAD to quickly cut straight lines. Moving on to position three, which is spindle. I'll go back into tools and activate a router tool. So for that, I'll, like I said, let's go into tools, select tool number 13, say yes to that. You have the ability to ramp up the spindle to a specified RPM. For argument's sake, let's try 18,000 and activate the spindle. And you can see it's live feed right here which can be beneficial during a job to peak at the RPM the spindle is running at. So learn, let's turn that off. Moving on to zones, depending on your application, you can set the zones in three different modes. In simple mode, you can set your zones to off, on, or auto. As the names imply, if your zones are on, they will remain on until they are turned off. Whereas setting it to auto opens up the vacuum when a job starts and automatically turns them off upon completion for offloading. In live deck mode, you have a circle of defined radius around your tool. So whichever zone it overlaps with, that zone turns on for a vacuum focused application. You may wanna consider this when processing small parts. Pendulum processing is for large format machines. You can dissect the machine in two halves where one half is active as you offload the material on the other. You can also toggle the zones overlay off if it's in your way to further customize your view. Tooling, I will get back to in a moment. Uh, moving on to the opposing end, you have your machine settings, relative and absolute move, origins manager, and consumables data, which we will tie in with tooling. Move also allows to set up different profiles with restricted access levels for instance, you may have a maintenance team and may not want them to alter tools or run jobs on the machine. All that is possible with our Move interface. The machine, as previously mentioned, we're using for this demonstration is Trident and is equipped with a vision system, which can also be controlled by, the, by Move. By clicking the camera icon, Move opens up another window with live camera feed. 
I'll not go into details on an AVS job since that's not the scope of today's webinar. With having access to all these parameters on Move, you can say goodbye to tools, configurations, zones, origins, and AVS manager. The jogging section is conveniently placed in the bottom right corner and can be switched between continuous and incremental mode with just a touch. You can choose the speed of your machine's motion, fast, medium, or slow, and the keys for directional jog. With the highlighted target representing your active head, you can easily spot your position on the process area for job setup. In this menu here, you can overwrite your feed rate of an active job to a maximum of 200% and also customize machine's motion as per your satisfaction by defining the speed of fast, medium, and slow movements. For a better understanding, let's work on a test case together. Let's pretend we have a new material to cut for which I need to add new tools. For argument's sake, we'll create a roughing and a finishing tool uh, one that will be registered as an automatic and the other as a manually loaded tool to cover both scenarios. To set up a tool, you'd need to first create a tools in the library. You can have hundreds of tools in the library, but that doesn't mean all of those tools are assigned to the machine. It's a good way to keep track of your tools, especially if you're going to be tracking your consumables. So we'll go into the tools flyout, click on the tool library, and hit the plus icon to add the tool. You would add the tool, give it a tool type. In our case, it's gonna be a router bit. The product name can be Axis one And the part ID can be 0258, for instance. And uh, manufacturer can be AAG. If you have tool, uh, used this tool uh, previously and you know for it to last maybe 50 hours and after 50 hours it may break or it may start to produce uh, bad quality cuts, this is really dependent on the depth and feeds and speeds. If you are gonna be using the same feeds and speeds which you previously have and you know that tool to last maybe 50 hours, you're gonna put those hours here and this is how you're going to track your consumables, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So let's give it a diameter. So let's put quarter and cap it with a maximum RPM of 24,000. Let's go ahead and hit OK. It has created a tool. By far, we haven't assigned that tool to a, our automatic tool changer or a manually loaded tool. So it's just a tool that resides in the library. So let's go ahead and create another one going to add that my tool type is going to be same router bits give it a router name or sorry product name it's going to be axes 2 part ID can be 02456 and the manufacturer can be AAG as well with this tool lasting maybe 80 hours our diameter for this tool let's say is half inch and the maximum rpm this tool can go or run at is 24,000. go ahead and hit okay go back to your tools tab and now you do see like these are all the tools that are assigned to the machine the first three or actually first two uh, are your knives and the remaining are your knife to, uh, router tools let's go ahead and hit the assign button uh, the tool we're going to assign to is going to be towards the spindle. The tool name is AAG. That's the first one. Or actually, it was Axis 1. And the tool number is 14 is the next freed up space, so I'm going to use that. And in my carousel, in my tool changer, the next empty index or next empty spot is uh, number 10, so I'm going to use that. I'm gonna enable auto mister so that whenever my NC file is gonna call for this tool, automatically misters uh, are gonna turn on for this particular tool. So let's go ahead and hit okay. Okay, so my ATC carousel has popped open for me to put in the tool. So I'm gonna go ahead, place the tool in, hit okay. So it has taken the tool in the carousel 
And my second tool is gonna be a manually loaded tool. The process is the same, so I'm gonna go ahead and specify the head this tool is gonna be assigned to. And go down, axis two is my tool. My next spot or tool number is 15. I can give it a custom number as well, but I'll go with 15. And in this case, it's gonna be manual tool changer and without mister. Let's go ahead and hit okay. Notice how it doesn't ask you or doesn't prompt any command to load the tool because this manually loaded tool can reside anywhere. Uh, the CNC call, uh, the NC CNC file will call for tool number 15, in which case you will have to walk up to the machine and load the tool on the operator side. So notice how there is exclamation mark for all these tools. That means all these tools weren't qualified. Anything with a green check mark, you can check it over here as well. If I click the gear icon, it has a tool qualification number. For all the ones with an exclamation mark, if I go to my recently created tools, I have my tool qualification set to zero. So I can set that. Moving on to consumables, um, they reside right over here in maintenance. So as you can see, tool number 14 and 15 are right over here. They are newly created tool with 100% life. But in your case, as you're gonna start using the tools, you're gonna see time accumulated over here and you can swap them maybe at 90%, 95, whatever the case is to avoid uh, wasting the material, All right? So it can be a very useful, useful feature. So I wanna end off with quickly showing you how um, the part manipulation works in Move. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of there. So by clicking part, in most com companies, the designer and the operator, there are two different people. But if in some case, in which case this is gonna be, this feature is gonna benefit you the most. But if in your company, if you have one person doing all the designing and the operator work as well, this is not gonna be the best way to go about it. Always, uh, if you're gonna be doing any part manipulation, it's always best to do it on CAD level rather than making any changes uh, on move. For those of you who have your operators wanting to make some changes on the fly, this is, the, this is a great feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a part, which is a square right here. Uh, if, let's say, I wanna cut two of those and I don't have my designer available to make those changes on the CAD level, I can go ahead and click on this part and maybe array it. Let's say if I have more space on the sheet, I need two of those. I can keep one row and add two columns and that's gonna give me two of those parts. Right, now one thing to keep in mind, as you can see down here, it hasn't added additional job on top. This is um, one NC file. So basically there were two NC files uh, that were stitched together to form one NC file. So if you have this part, um, so you have multiple operations on this part, part with multiple tools, it, the way it's gonna tackle is it's gonna complete that part and move on to the next one. It's by no means a nested feature. Um, it's like I said, two NC files, complete NC files stitched together to formulate one just to save some time in case the designer isn't available and operator is able to make changes on the fly. Now, if you want to add additional parts to the queue, so you can, I'll just go ahead and add another one right here. I'll just change its position. So as you can see down here, it has an added another part to the queue. I can add multiple parts if I want. So I'm just gonna add another one of this down here, as you can see, the more I add, the way this is gonna work is gonna go ahead and complete job number one, move on to job number two, and then move on to job number three um, and follows the pattern there. So that's all I wanted to share based on the time I had. I hope you enjoyed the session and found value in it. If you want more information, uh, something um, that if you want us to cater to your specific application, maybe you want this to be demonstrated in person, you're more than welcome to reach out to us and we can arrange for that. Hey Abdullah, how's it going? 
Hey Ursula, it's going well. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. I'm sure you enjoyed the demonstration of the software here. That was really insightful. I'm thankful for it. I'm sure our customers are too. Yeah. But before we wrap up this video, can I ask you a couple questions I think would be useful for our customers? Please go right ahead. <laughs> okay. So can these move touchscreen HMI? Can it be retrofitted on existing machines at the customer site or is this only an option that or only like new machines can get? Oh, that's a great question and I'm yeah. sure our customers and viewers are wondering that as well. So this can be purchased with a brand new machine or it can be integrated into your existing models as well. Now it can be purchased directly on our website which is CNC shop or you can call us today to place an order. Okay, wait, wait, wait a minute. So you're telling me that a customer can call in today and say, order it, get it shipped to them, and they can install it themselves, like they don't need a service tech or anything? Oh, that's exactly what it is. So you heard it right. So this is as easy as just plugging it in. Uh, you, so the kit comes with a stand and mm -hmm. all-in-one computer. You have a conduit that goes back into your electrical panel, and everything ties into our A2S, A2MC controller. Good. And does it come with like instructions on how to do like the like panel? All stuff? that, yes. The, all that does include your instructions. Mm -hmm. uh, if by by any means, if you do get stuck, you can always give us a call, yeah. and our techs are happy to assist. But all said, though that instruction manual that's been put together for our customers should be sufficient. All that is in there. It's as easy as plugging it in one, two, and three. There are three cables: one for your e-stop key switch and a power for the network. Well, that does seem pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It's pretty simple. <laughs> Good. So let's say a customer or an operator is really used to using, we call it, the older interface. And now mm -hmm. you're putting an HMI with a touchscreen HMI. Would that lock them to only use this HMI move? Or could they potentially like be switching between the two? Mm -hmm. That's a great question, Ursula. So you can see a key switch right over here. So right now we are in our move mode. Mm -hmm. So our move is active. You can see our keys, uh, our touch screen, everything you can control your machine using your all in one. But if I were to use my smart console, I can switch it back. Now it restricts my ability to use move oh, yeah, yeah. and it activates all my keys on my smart console. Okay, now so you can jog your machine, use your machine as you will using your smart console alone. Now, if you switch it back to move, mm -hmm. What it does, it, it restricts all the keys on the smart console. The only keys you have access to is your stop and your, uh, sorry, your pause and e-stop buttons. Uh, and Rest, then you will do all of it over here. Yes. Cool. Okay, let's just dream a little. Now, imagine I'm a really experienced CNC operator. Oh, <laughs> which I, I bet you are. <laughs> oh, I wish. But let's say that I want to change my NC code, NC file mm -hmm. on the go. Like I want to change my feeds and feeds, maybe my RPM. Can, could I potentially do that here? Certainly. So let, let's say if we had a job yeah. in here and you can do that. So right, uh, right beside the job that you were trying to edit, there's an edit bar. Uh, not that button, but here, there's an edit bar. You can edit all those components here. You cool. can edit your feeds, speeds, whatever you're willing to, the RPMs, mm -hmm. you can change on the go. And it saves that instantly, and all of that, uh, you can run the file right thereafter. Hmm. And because this is an only-one computer, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but you could, in theory, have your CAD CAM software in this computer. Certainly. And if you are a certified designer that like, <laughs> wants to do that, you could like change and do updates into your CAD CAM and then send it or something, yeah. right? So like some of the operators, uh, yeah. they don't deal much on the CAD side, but most yeah. of them, they have that ability to manipulate the design files as well. If that's the case, yes, you can certainly go into the software. Like I said, it's all in one. You can download the software, your CAD package in this case. You can manipulate the files and transfer it directly onto the machines. Yeah. And transferring your files is as easy as dragging and dropping onto the, your move screen right over here. And that's gonna make it your active file. Yeah, that's really different to what it used to be because we use the apps on the older version, right? right. The apps that we so use. you get rid of all the files manager for all those customers who already have our machines, uh, in which case you have your enterprise apps and this, you don't deal with file manager, you don't have your tools manager, everything is incorporated within this software. Oh my God, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I have definitely learned a lot today. I hope that you guys did too. So if you have any questions that we didn't potentially answer today, make sure that you put them in the comments below. 
what I think that that's it for us. Oh yeah, it's certainly a game changer. And thanks again for joining us today and hope to see you again. Yeah, bye.